Hello everyone, thanks for joining us for another episode of Hook, Line and Sinker, The Lap Andrew, yep. where we are travelling around the country. Today here on the Queensland Central Coast, the sun is shining and the seas are flat. Nick, we've made it as far as Gladstone. We're about to drop her in the water and go for a fish, but to us, Gladstone is the start of the Great Barrier Reef and all the adventures that come with it. Hey, guys, oh. you're on! Oh, that's, a God, that's a better cod. That's a better cod on the swim bait. That's a big fish. Yeah! yeah. Oh, this is what it's all about, having a bark rusher like this driving around the country. Look at that. <laughs> Funny green piece we're here. Ding oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> if you fall in the water, you do that sort of thing. <laughs> look at that! <laughs> oh, look at the size of it! <laughs> oh, look at the size of it! Our destination of the week is the subtropical high-vis capital of Australia, Gladstone, Queensland's biggest commodity port and gateway to the Great Barrier Reef. It's not only an important industrial city, but a bit of a fishing mecca as well, with rivers, dams and reef all readily accessible. Our destination of the week is proudly brought to you by the mighty Isuzu D-Max. Now, with intuitive six-speed auto coupled to its three-litre turbo diesel, D-Max has the power and torque to get the job done. D-Max, go your own way. So the beautiful Queensland port city of Flanston and uh, to lead us today, we have organised a local Yamaha man in the area. From Countess Coast Marine, this is Darren Nice to be here, Nick. Thank you. Uh, mate, just quickly, in a nutshell, describe what you've got on the agenda. You've organised, first of all, a magnificent day. Yeah, yeah, the weather gods have been great to us today. Um, we're about 25 miles offshore. We're going to play fish at a little place called the Gutter. The Gutter? The Gutter. Right, yep. so we're getting down in the Gutter today. We're in the Gutter, yeah. You'll, uh, you'll be right at home there. The dogs, I'm not even going to go there. Um, the thing that I'm excited about is that I feel as though we've changed climates. We've come from the south into the north. Everything we catch today will be colourful reef fish. We've made it to the Great Barrier Reef. These are tropical waters. It's even got a tropical feel, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. Things have changed. We want red, red fish today. Let's go, big fella. Let's see what you got. <laughs> Fresh is on. Brownie carefully positioned the crusher on one of his secret marks and before long we were ready to send a bait into the depths. We'd come to a place called the gutter. Oh, oh you got a hello. fish group. I've got a fish, dog. That's just... encouraging, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. It's a not a bad fish either. It's not a bad fish. It's got a bit of weight. Nice. Yep, it's a good fish, Brownie. First fish of the day. First drop too. First, first drop, drop to first eh? fish. First bait. It just goes to show you've got to go with the people who know, so the you're locals. Right. You're right, Nicky's at home in the gutter, isn't he? He is. Oh, he's... Stop it with the gutter jokes. <laughs> and gutter I don't talk. want to hear any jokes about driving boats or launching boats, OK? I don't okay. want to hear any jokes. Everyone just be nice to each other today, Brownie, <laughs> all right? Yeah, a bit you fragile. Get, you just concentrate on this fish. I'm still a bit fragile. Do you want to get a net or something? Uh, hang on. No. Do, we, yeah. do we need a net? I don't know. Do we need a net? Do we it's some a, colour? Oh, it's gone. Oh, no. I saw colour. What colour was it? Was it there the right colour? There it is down there. Right. Well, this is exciting. This is exciting. My fish, which I just lost. Yes. And I was really down on myself. Yes. Um, has just floated to the surface. And quick, Brownie. Do something. Get the quick net. Brownie, Come Brownie. I'll get the net. You get the net. Come on. Yes. Quickly. Because he might swim off. Yes. Yes! Okay, this is really exciting now. What a start to the day. It's a cod, beautiful cod. It's a, co it's a beautiful cod. Scooping. Straight into the net, and look at oh, that! Yes. Fish is on the board! Well done! It's not red, but it's a cod. Brownie, nice edible. fish, yeah, good fish. Really good edible fish, isn't it? What uh... about that for an unorthodox style of capture? <laughs> yep. I guess that's what you call sight fishing. Yeah. Sight fishing for cod in 40 metres. Look at that. He's a lovely cod. 
Yeah. So we're happy with that, Brandy. That's, that's a, a good that's thing. That's a good fish, yeah. Because sometimes I'll go to fishing places and I might be in a river in the Northern Territory, for example, Andrew, and everyone's yep. catching bear and I might catch a cod. Yep. And I'll say, oh. Yeah, yeah but these are gutter cod. Okay, gutter Until cod. you eat them, they're mm. absolutely superb. No, they are. That's yeah. a good size fish. Right, Fifth. Back to the gutter, yeah. please, Captain. All right. Awesome. Nice start. All right. The hussa. They're usually associated with the bigger red fish, so that's a good sign. That's a All good right. sign. Oh, yes, Brownie. Yes, Brownie. Saw that. That was a good bite. I just jump in the corner. Yeah, mate. Better fish? Uh, yeah, it feels OK. The weight there, a bit of a rod bend. I'm only fishing pretty light gear, but... You're a sports fisherman? Yeah, I'd like to give them a chance. And we got colour. What do we got? What are we looking at? It's a red throat emperor. Nice red throat emperor. Oh, that's a keeper. Oh, I jagged him. That's definitely a keeper. They're good. Okay, a very, very nice table Superb fish, the red throat. Excellent. Excellent. Minimum size 38 centimetres and a bag limit of seven per person. Well, he's easily 38. We'll, we'll measure it. Oh, he'll, be a, he'll be a good table fish. Yeah. And Brownie, is that, uh, you know, is that one of your targets when you come out and do yeah, this? Yeah, we do. With that? Wherever you find these, generally you'll get your, your coral trout species and tusk fish and that sort of species We're around. We're in the right there. spot. Yeah. Right, good. They're nice fish. There was plenty of variety coming over the side. Small fish, weird fish, but nothing big and red, which is what you want out here. It's juvenile Spanish mackerel, and obviously you get, uh, you know, some big suckers of those out oh, here. Oh, yeah, you can get them up to sort of 30, 40 kilos yeah, around right. here. Yeah. Then some encouragement, species-wise. Something a bit more thrashy than macods, I think. Fair coral trout. Yeah, that'd be good. Because Andrew, interestingly enough, Brownie's about to go on holiday. Yeah. Um, to take a break from his holiday. Oh, come on. <laughs> Hard work. Uh, and he's after some reef fish for the holiday. Ah. Oh. Well, he might have come to the right place. We might have come to the right place. In particular, place. you're after trout. This is good colour. Oh, oh look at it's the there. right fish. He's what red a emperor. lovely fish that is. That's your favourite fish. Oh, I reckon. It's a lovely fish. Lovely Listen red to your emperor. voice, it changes pitch. I know. That is obviously a red emperor brownie. Yeah, he's a little bit small. He's too small, but they are, I'm saying, just about as good as it gets, the red emperor. Obviously, they get a lot bigger than that and need to be, what are they going to be, brownie? 55. 55. So this one gets to go back. Still to come today, it's car versus boat in an epic race up the coast and more action and intrigue from the world of budget project boats. Hook on and sinker now and you find us fishing a spot called the Gutter on the Great Barrier Reef off Gladstone. So far it's been a bit patchy, but that's all about to change. Good oh, fish! Go oh yes, yes, bro, yes, yes, go. yes. That's exciting, that's good. Yes. Oh, that, go. That's our heaviest fish of the day, <laughs> yep. near the ratchet there, just ticking away, potentially a Spaniard. Oh, Everything's man. just starting to work on board now. How good is this? Hey, on, how I know. good is this? I think it's good. The sun That's all I'm being, saying. Yeah, no, no, I know. I wholeheartedly I'll, uh, agree. Let's Shouldn't hope it's red in colour. Ooh, you just about tore that out of your hands. Yeah, no, he's fighting all the way yeah, up. Yeah, all the way, always a good thing. Big head shakes. Come Here on. we go, colour. Come on, what colour? Uh, yeah, good colour. Good colour? Right. Yeah, colour. good colour. Oh, it's oh, a big nanny guy. Nanny. A big nanny or is, guy. It, is it a finger? No, it's a nanny. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Just net it. It's a good fish. That's good nanny. fish. That's what we're after. Oh, and there we go. That is um, outstanding. That is the right colour. That was a good fighting fish. Yes. That is a new species. And Pretty Brownie, cute. most importantly, is that a good eating fish? They are a great eating fish. A great eating fish. They are. Only need to be 40 centimetres. Yeah, well, so he's... Easily 40. Yeah, um, so, easy. Brownie, all right, let's talk your top five species-wise. Just come around here. Uh, where's this fish sitting? Does he make the top five? Oh, he, he's probably on the, the bottom end of the top five, like the, the high end. Yeah, OK. Um, yeah, you're never going to beat your trout and your red, uh, red emperor. Yes. And, and that's but he might be hovering around four, there. He's up there, five, maybe. six. A, yeah, five to six probably. I'm putting him in the esky. You yeah. could do a lot worse and, anyway. And um, getting another one. You could do a lot worse. Oh yeah, another 
good quality fish, and this is going all right. Now, maybe you should run charters, Brownie. You think? Yeah, Brownie's charters. I really don't have a head for television. You do have a head for television. <laughs> Look at you. You're very attractive. <laughs> That's very kind of you, Andrew. Oh, First fish. I've ever been told that by another man. Yeah, right. Here we go, colour now. What is it? No, maybe that's a remora. No, that's colour. The wrong colour. Well, it might. No, it's got. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's red. It's another oh, one. Oh, it's another one. Do we need a net? Nanny. You can lift him in. I'll just lift him in. You are king of the nanny. Nice work. King of the nannies. King of the bottom of the top five eating fish. Look at that. That's a nice fish. Yeah, good Lovely. fish to catch. Yeah, that's Here right. they go, Well, I give it to you. Oh, yeah. Nick's on. On, on. What are you thinking, Nick? Mm, I'm not sure, Brownie. I've never, I haven't caught enough nana guys to uh, to think that it's that, but it's feeling, you know, fishy. Fair bend in that rod. Yes, a fair bend in the big venom. Oh, where have we got? Yes, I've got somebody else's line. Ah, oh, that'd be me. And a uh, a nana guy, which may be 40 centimeters. 40 centimeters. You go 40 centimetres. All right, Brownie, where are we going to the... From to his the uh, lip lip to the longest point on his tail, yeah. 45, 45. centimetres, the keeper. It was a very solid nanny bite, and with a few good fish on ice, we decided it was time once again to hit the road. But this time, there's a twist. And later in the show, Project Boats on a Budget. Some people say we have the best job in the world and at times it's hard to argue. Ding -o! <laughs> <laughs> but it's safe to say if we didn't host a fishing show, we would still want to work in the marine environment. Whether you want to be a deckhand or the master of a ship, the AMC has a course to suit and enjoys a suite of world-class facilities to help you learn your craft. I couldn't imagine trying to learn this purely in a classroom. So being able to come to Beauty Point, being able to work on this, the bluefin, and you know, doing the approaches that they're doing, seeing how the vessel responds to uh, rudder commands and the different controllable pitch environments, very beneficial. And just getting the opportunity to do it over and over and over today to get it right. Some courses last just a matter of days or weeks. The Coxons is a good example. It's a good skipper step for bigger boats as well. A lot of people do a Coxon and then come back and do Master 24, which is the next level up. If you want to really do a ticket that's going to matter to you professionally, this is the place to come. Check out the website to see where a career in the maritime industry could take you. Life on the road and just had the big Yamaha 300 serviced by our good friend yep. and fishing guru Darren Brown here at Curtis Coast Marine. She's racking up the hours, dogs. Yep. Now, next stop on the road mm -hmm. is... Yipun. Further north, yes. Yipun, near Rockhampton. Um, I believe by water, mm -hmm. it's a, it's only sort of 50 miles as the crow flies, not that miles, far. 50 yep. A couple of hours in the yep, bar crash. Yep. By road, 150, 160 k's, probably a couple of hours in the D-Max. This is where it gets interesting. It has been suggested that we should race the boat, the bar crusher, yes. v the D-Max. You take the boat, I'll take the car. Let us go, Drew. So, for the record, Gladstone to Yapoon by road is 151 kilometres and, according to the locals, doable most days in about two hours. By boat, it's around 100 kilometres and, on a good day, easily achievable in two hours. The only rule is that we must each catch a fish somewhere along the way. Simple. Time to put the boat in. And this has been a bit of an issue lately. I'm Gently, I'm slowly. I'm leaving everything on. So slowly change. now. Latch, everything is starting on. Just very gently now. Everything is on. But quickly though, this is a race. Quickly, quickly. Is that enough? What? Is that enough? Not enough. Yep. Not enough, no. Come Hopefully. on, come on. Back you come. That? Back you come. Back you that. come. Keep coming. Back you come. Whoa! Drew. What? I haven't got the keys. <laughs> I haven't got any keys. <laughs> I need the keys. 
I can't go. We can't have the race. I haven't got the keys. Can you give me the keys, please? Please? All right. Come on. It's just silly, Andrew. It's just <laughs> foolish, foolish, foolish. This is a race, man. You have to catch a fish as well. What? Catch a fish on the way. Not fishing. Well, it's part of it. It's a fishing show. Is there any leader? No. You want to go back a bit? Not really in the water. Can you go back a bit? Okay, just remember what you learned in boat safety school. And that, ladies and gents, is how you do it. Ready, set, go. Really? God. Seatbelt on. Where to go? We are racing. All right, well, this is potentially a bit of a mission. The first bit of it, at least, Gladstone Harbour is big. It is a bit of a maze. Um, the tide is on the way down. It's about a third tide now, and there is a very circuitous route um, to get out of here. Thankfully, you know, modern electronics, GPS, whatever, it shouldn't be too much of an issue, but it's always a bit, you know, in a new, it's a bit like driving in a big city for the first time, you know, you kind of don't really know where you're going. You think, yeah, I'm right. Oh God, am I right? The other issue now is this six knot zone. 6.0 knots I'm doing. I need to be making every postal winner here. Six knot zone. Right, you poon, you poon, you poon. Um, I've got no idea where you poon is. I mean, I know it's north and sort of in from, um, or out from Rockhampton. Um, how good is it though? How good and relaxing is today going to be? I've got to be honest, I'm happy not to be on the boat today. It's been a big, sort of week or so, uh, with some ups and some downs. Um, and I'm pretty happy just to sit in the D-Max and all the creature comforts here. We've got the leather seats, we've got the sat nav, we've got the cruise control um, up the highway we roll. Let's have a look how far we're talking. Select as destination, Yapoon. We are talking 149 kilometres, two hours, it's telling me. Up the A1, through Rockhampton, out to Yapoon. So, let's go. Push button start, all the creature comforts the D-Max has. Let's go to your point. Take the next right, then enter the roundabout. Okay, no problem. All right, there's the end of six knots, let's go. Have it out. Yes, roundabout, roundabout. Um, right, so look, I haven't made it very far. First stop, fuel stop. I need some diesel. Um, oh, that's good. Oh, that's great. This, um, <laughs> this is Nick's wallet. He's left it in the car. It's a tan wallet. I would never own a tan wallet. Um, this is his credit card. This is Nick's credit card. His pin, I know. It's 4497. So I'll put some fuel in the mighty D-Max. Um, and then I've got Nick's credit card. This is turning in to be a very, very good day. 
Oh, high flow diesel. Yes, yes, I'm a trucker. I'm a trucker. What do I do? Pay over there. Insert credit card. Yes, yes. Remove card, yes. Read error? This won't do. I only know. Do that one. We don't have those in Tasmania. No. <laughs> Remove card. Processing, please wait. Insert, I just inserted the card. I just inserted it. Processing, please wait. Read error, data. I'm going to go to a normal service station, one with a person. A stupid service station with no person working. I want a kind, friendly person who can take Nick's credit card and I can then commit credit card fraud with my tan wallet. I hope I don't get beaten up walking around the streets of Gladstone with a tan wallet. There's every, every possibility that I'll get beaten up. Right. You know, 10 years ago, you wouldn't even think about running your outboard full noise like this for more than, you know, a bit of show-off time, a bit of a drag with your mates. This outboard, this 4.2-litre V6, all the bells and whistles, sitting there 5.5, five, just sounds good. You know, it doesn't sound stressed or unhappy or anything really. It just sounds like it does at three and a half thousand. Fuel station with a person. Excellent. Tanned wallet. You would think that doing a lap of Australia, 25,000 k's and spending life on the road, that you would get pretty used to putting diesel in the D-Max. But it is amazing how infrequently you need to tip it in. This car is very, very economical. Hand wallet. I might get a few goodies. Well, it's been a pretty good first 50 odd k's. Um, I just bought this because I could. Nick's credit card. Triple caramel chunk ice cream. Have that. Um, a water. You got to stay well hydrated. A fruit box, just for a bit of a sugary hit. Uh, a cherry ripe, just in case I get hungry. And I just saw these. Complete and utter waste because I've got good sunnies, but I just thought these, just to get in the spirit of competition and racing, they weren't that cheap, surprisingly. They were actually $22, so, yep, perfect. Let's see what else we can get up the road. Right, let's go. Give me a call. See how he's going out there on the high seas. Ooh. Here he is, the great man. Andrew, how are you? Yeah, good, how are you? Yeah, really well, thank you. Where do you find yourself on this beautiful, glorious day? I am 116 kilometres only from your poo. What? You just roll up the highway. It's easy. Yeah. So I'm an hour away. Um, yeah, no, I'm less than that away. I'm halfway up uh, Curtis Island. About to, I'm about to catch a fish. Have you caught a fish yet? No. What? I've got to catch a fish. Remember that. And a car is a terrible thing from which to catch a fish. Won't be a problem. Roadworks? Uh, no roadworks as yet, no. Just rolling uh, beautifully along. Road rage? Road rage? Have you had any road rage incidents? Of course no road rage. Yelled, have you yelled at a grandmother? No. That's no. a normal act. I've got old people. Have you yelled at any old people? I've got fuel and a few snacks. Have you um, have you caught any fish? No, about to put the lures in the water. Actually, got to go. Hang on, my reel's off the rod. It's swinging around. It's about to hit the outboard. I've got to go and fix that. I'll talk to you soon. Bye now. Ah, oh, okay. Bye. Um, I've got your credit card. No, oh, he's gone. Mm. OK, so we've proved so far that Andrew needs human intervention to fill up a car. And that Nick is a grown man who has a tan wallet. After the break, we get serious and fish. And still to come, can he money saving tips for rebuilding boats on a budget? 
hook, line and sinker and we're locked in an epic battle of car versus boat, a race from Gladstone to Yapoon. It's early stages and the D-Max is about to hit its first hurdle. 60. 60's not 100. What are you doing, mate? How are you going? <laughs> I mean, how much more of this road works can there be? Seriously. The thing about being on the road is that you are at the mercy of what's happening on the road. So road works, you know, any accidents or anything like that, you're sort of a bit stuck. You don't really have that sense of freedom like you would if you were on a train or indeed on a boat. This is not going to help in the great race to Yapoon, sitting here twiddling my thumb, waiting for the road works. And stop. Now, one of the challenges, sort of the only real challenge aside from getting to Yapoon first, is that we each have to catch a fish. Now, a boat is a much better setup enterprise for catching a fish than a car, as good as the D-Max is. So, um, there is an island. I think this is Curtis Island or something. There's actually a little channel on the other side of it that if the tide was up a bit, we could have run down there full bore. But anyway, as it turns out, there's some rocks and bombies and bits and pieces, and I reckon that that's probably a reasonable spot to put a lure in the water and hopefully jag something, you know, maybe a mackerel or a something, a tuna or whatever. Diving lure, hopefully with some wire on it. Where is one? Where is one? There. With lures in the water, I was away. A big Spaniard, the target species. Ideally, I'd catch one in about eight minutes as there was still about 50 k's to run. You need to be a bit more resourceful in a car to catch fish, but if you know what to look out for, it can be done. Righto, righto, righto. Down there. Can't catch a fish, just bite some fish. There's got to be. This is home of Barra. Um, can I please get a piece of Red Emperor and chips? Some of that, Red. What do you recommend? Depending on whether you're healthy or not healthy. Mm. What about battered? Just on credit. Credit? It's fine, thanks. Don't want to get boys or Approved. No, no, that's fine. Thanks very much. All approved. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. Excellent, thanks. Oh, old fashioned fish and chips. The mackerel fishing was not as productive as I'd hoped. Matters were made worse when my reel mysteriously fell off and sank to the bottom. That happened. A change of tactics was required, and as is often the way at sea, help was close at hand. The other beautiful thing about travelling by boat is that you run into uh, a lot of like-minded individuals out doing exactly the same as you, which you won't. Everyone on the road's a bit stressed, a bit, oh, I've got to get there, got to be there. These dudes, I don't know how they, who they are. How you going, guys? Any good? They got a few early, it's a bit quiet now. What if I had to catch one fish to save my life? Where should I go? Here. Excellent. That's good. Thank you. Here. Water, water, water. I must catch a fish. Here, here. I haven't actually seen very much water on my travels, so this looks great. I mean, this is the coast. Tide might be a bit low. Um, probably crocs in this part of the world. We've sort of entered croc infested waters maybe. That's good, that's great. Winter time, why wouldn't you want to go north in winter time? 
I will have a few token casts just to say that I've fished because I'm sure Nick will have caught some. I mean, he's got the big expensive boat, um, all the flash gear, you know, the big hummingbird sounder. He's got, he's got all the gear. So I'm sure he will have caught some fish. So he, would, he will have been doing the fishing component of this show very, very nicely indeed. I reckon five more casts. There's an old fishing line that says, if you want to go fishing, use a lure. If you want to catch a fish, use bait. I had a quick look in the angle for some bait. Right, bait. Asparagus, cheese, or chicken. Chicken wins. Good on, good on, chicken. Chicken and fish, fish and chicken. I was in the pub in Glasgow the other day, and I've seen a reef in boat, you know, the ship to shore, the paddock surfer. The combination of uh, beef and seafood, but here in Gladstone, chicken and seafood they're doing. Look at that. What a beautiful fish. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Let's get some eggs up in there now. Doesn't matter. Handsome. So with a big tick in the fish catching box, it was time to continue north. After the break, the nail biting finish of our epic race and still to come, project boats for the budget minded. If you love hook, line and sinker, then don't let the magic end when the show does. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram, constantly posting updates and videos about our adventures. There we go. Feel free to join in the conversation, post stories and pictures of your greatest catches and keep up to date with where we've been and where we're going. Oh, look at the size of it! Oh, look at the size of it! <laughs> so jump online today and become part of the Hook, Line and Sinker team. It's Hook, Line and Sinker and you find us in the closing stages of a thrilling Boat V car race from Gladstone to Yapoon. There's so much to take in. This very impressive animal, the big bull, signifies that I've made it as far as Rockhampton, so I'm not too far from Yapoon. Um, the bull, interestingly enough, a little bit of history here for you now, was uh, put here by the Queen in 1972. Uh, but really became famous when there was a great marketing ploy when one of the fast food chains decided to call its hamburgers Angus Burgers and they gave the cattle from this region a name, Angus. And all of a sudden it was cool to eat Angus. He's an impressive animal. I don't think any of that is accurate, but on board the Crusher I was getting close and able to share some sightseeing tips of my own. All right, quick, just quickly time for a bit more interesting history. That is Harmicky Island, uh, maybe part of the Keppel Group. I think that's Fairway Rock. Uh, both are considered to be lovely. Got to go, don't. Another interesting fact is that lots of people like to traverse these waters in sailboats. Now, people in sailboats can be a bit snorty sometimes, but they're generally speaking much nicer than people in cars. The end was in sight. Keppel Point Marina was the finishing line, and this was going to be close. Righto, give Nick another call. Must be getting close. Good day, bro. How you going, Nico? Yes, I've got Black Rock in sight. You know what that means, my little land lover buddy? Uh, no, I don't. No, it means I turn the corner and I am there, my man. Oh, that's all right. I'm, nearly, I'm just down the road. I'm at a part of Queensland that I want to live at. It's just superb. Sorry? I've lost you. I've lost him. All right, anyway. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. The race to the line was as thrilling as could be. The crusher powering on. Now there are the masts of the Keppel Bay Marina. And that means just one thing. 
That means the finish line is in sight. I wonder where Andrew is. I wonder where he is, what he's been doing, how he spent his day. The D-Max arriving in style. Right, I well it looks like our timing was absolutely perfect. Spot on. I've just arrived. He's just arrived. Job done. And the outcome of this important study into modal transportation effectiveness, well, the car used less fuel than the boat. The boat caught more fish than the car. Andrew spent more money on rubbish. And Nick has a tan wallet. Brilliant. After the break, we enter the construction phase of our project boats on a budget. If you would like to dig a little deeper into the when, where and how, plus all the latest gear to use, look no further than the team at Wilson Fishing. He's a good fish. Oh! 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 A family-owned Australian fishing company, Wilson, have the online resources to help you catch more fish more often. Oh, mate, look at this thing. It's gold. It's unbelievable. Zarek Zeppelins. Well done. Subscribe for your free online magazine, Redefine the Game. Yes, double B. Nice. Explore countless action-packed YouTube tutorials. <laughs> <It's 80. laughs> That's a beast! That is what fishing is about, is catching things like that in places like this. Absolutely awesome. And stay up to date via social media for news from all the brands that make Wilson Fishing great. You're watching Hook, Line and Sinker, and thanks to the on-water money experts at Yamaha Motor Finance, we're investigating the financial merits of doing up old boats. Mine is a very interesting and potentially valuable boat, the Haynes Hunter Tri Hunter 170. So far I've removed the top shell and the rotten transom. I'm saving big bucks by doing the job myself. This is Michael, my mentor, who's showing me the way. Today's the day that the stringers are coming out. We've got the floor out uh, and now it's time to cut all the stringers out, which Although we said some of them are quite solid, when you actually cut into them, you can see that there is a bit of rot in there. Not surprising, given that it's 50 years old with a bit of plywood. Um, now, I should come clean here because I've sort of been saying throughout this project that I'm going to do a lot of it by myself. Not this part. Michael is a professional, I am not. Michael has a steady hand with the grinder, cutter thing. I do not. I would cut holes in the bottom of the hull of the boat, which would be more work down the track. So um, I am budgeting this. I'm paying for him to do this job, uh, to get the stringers out, and then we'll grind it all back and we'll put new stringers in, new floor, new transom, and she's good to go. He's good, he's going well. It's actually a pretty big job. Each stringer is encased in fibreglass, which has to be carefully cut away without damaging the hull. Michael is a gun. It was a pleasure to watch him work. Eventually, we had it all out. Then comes the next step, grinding. This involves removing all the laminate and epoxy to give a clean surface to start the rebuild. For this, my mentor Michael brought another mentor, Chris, along. I've never had so much mentoring. The grinding and cutting continued. It was hard work. Oh, what peeling away an onion. Look at that. There goes the bow rider. The bow rider feature is no longer. And look at that. Once again, we're left with just a blank canvas. We're sitting here, driving my boat. Look at the casting platform I'm going to have. I'm starting to see it, Michael. Yeah, it should come along nicely now. That's looking great. You've got two blokes working for you now. Really clever money-saving ideas there. Anyway, back at Project V19, the build is going beautifully and it's getting close to decision time. 
So Mick claims that this boat is built strong enough to accept any outboard that exists in the world. And um, it's kind of getting to the time where we need to settle on what will be the power plants slash power plants for this boat. And for that, it's time to talk to our expert friends at Yamaha. So I know we're better to look at engine possibilities than here at a boat show. And of course, at a boat show, you'll find this gentleman who is Glenn Gibson from Yamaha. G'day. How you going, Nick? Really, really well, mate. Awesome. V19, you love this project as much as everybody else. Uh, let's talk power options, though, because there are a lot of potential power solutions for a V19 Haynes. Yeah, everyone knows a V19 and they look at it like, we're well, here we are in the southern states. Yep. Quite often mentioned is twins. Yes. You know, should we go twin 115 horsepower? A lot of horsepower yeah. for a boat that size. Yeah, a lot of, you know, they always say the twins make a better boat. Yeah. But, you know, we also then like the people that go, oh, I want a single motor, I want to go fast. So, oh, I don't know, I don't know. What do you feel like? Well, the other thing about this Gibbo is I need to be conscious of the money that I'm investing. I need to be budget conscious. I need to watch my spend. With that information, I think I've got what you're looking for over here. Here. Nick, I reckon the engine for you is right here. Really, Glenno? Really? Yep. yep. This, the lightweight four-cylinder 200. It's an engine you're familiar with. Very familiar with. Yes, it's it an is. engine that we love, but just quickly for uh, the people out there who may not be quite so familiar with it, describe it for me, Glenno. Well, it's a new engine for us. It is a four-cylinder 200 horsepower. So we used to have a V6. A lot of people said it's a little bit too heavy for my boat. So what the engineers come out with us is a 200 horsepower that's a four cylinder. It is lightweight, which people always say we want lightweight. Yeah. People say we want better fuel economy and this delivers that. But most importantly, it also has digital throttle and shift. So the installation, the service, the ongoing, it's effortless. You are getting all the benefits of Yamaha technology in this engine. This is the one for your boat. You will love it. Thank you very much. I suspect you're right. There you have it, Drew, a match made in heaven. Haynes V19R with a Yamaha F200B. This will be the best boat in the world. What's that? Sorry, I was asleep. Yamaha Motor Finance is simple, convenient and is tailor-made to suit your lifestyle. Applications can be completed at one of Yamaha's nationwide dealerships or pre-approved online through the YMF website. Now there is even more reason to take advantage of the benefits Yamaha Motor Finance and Insurance can offer you. Are you ready to make your dream a reality? Now next time on Hook, Line and Sinker, we hit the middle of Rockhampton for some amazing barra action, cruise and camp in the magical Whit Sundays, and more budget boat money saving tips.